Yeah. And, and, and so the, the <coughs> business grows, you become a national business, you've got all, all, the, all these offices, and, and you feel the need to go public. In 1962, you, you went public, but the CPAs kind of enter into this again, don't they? Yeah, we decided to go public, and I can't really tell you why, but it was back then, a lot of companies were going public, and we didn't see much downside to it. And um, so in 1960, one, we were going public, and to go public, you need three things. You need a lawyer, you need an accountant, and you need an underwriter. So we picked uh, three big ones. Uh, our lawyer did pick the accountant and the underwriter. And halfway through the audit, that, that's what they do first. They audit your books. They didn't show The auditors didn't show up, and we called them. And they said, we can't audit your books. We said, you can't audit our books? Why? They said, because we, our headquarters feels like you're competing with our industry. So the CPAs would, the CPAs. wouldn't let you do it. Well, they couldn't do that today. But back then, right. I guess they could. Conspiracy so they, against trade. Uh, the, the underwriting fell through, which is one of the best things that ever happened to us. Because we kept, we still owned 100% of the company. Right. And it was growing so fast. But eventually, when you did go public, you used a Kansas City company. Is that is that we right? We used a company Kenneth called Baum. George K. Baum. George K. Baum. And uh, they were a small company at the time. Uh, and but we only went public with the center part of the country, right. Midwest, and we we owned the rest of it, and which. Is, and prob probably made a, l a lot of people in our part of the country pretty happy when they uh, when they well, saw what happened to their H&R stock. Stock came out at four dollars a share and immediately went down. <laughs> but, uh, eventually, it started. But going obviously, out. huge a huge success. You grow to be one of the biggest uh, companies in the country, a uh, Fortune 500 company. <clears throat> but it, you know, it's always interesting. It seems to me, Henry, in, at, w w when discussing a great success story like yours and, and Dick's and and, uh, and Leon's and H&R Block. Uh, to talk about the, the mistakes or the hard times. In 1972, you, you ran into a, a little bit of a roadblock with, uh, with the IRS. You'd had 17 years of increasing earnings and, and, and growth, yeah. and then in 1972, you hit a little bit of a wall. We did. The uh, commissioner at that time <clears throat> wrote on the 1040, which was sent to everybody, uh, if you have any tax questions, do not go to commercial tax preparers. Uh, call the IRS. And then in addition to that, he said, taxes really aren't very complicated. They're so simple, even a fifth grader can fill them out. <laughs> well, of course, many school, school teachers tried it in fifth grade, and not, the kids could not fill them out. <laughs> and, uh, it's like um, the old Groucho Mark sort our, of our, remark. He says, it's so simple a 10-year-old child could understand it. Could someone please go out and get me a 10-year-old child? <laughs> And um, so our board met and suggested I call on him in Washington, which I did. And um, <clears throat> uh, Jerome Kurtz was his name. <clears throat> and he said, Mr. Block, you, you don't understand. He said, I'm putting them, everybody else in that business out of, out of business. I'm helping you. And I thought, well, you know, with friends like that. Yeah, you don't need enemies. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but uh, that's exactly what happened. We could, uh, we could withstand the loss of business. The next year, we cut our fees, and we had tremendous growth. And so the company grows. And I have to tell this personal story that you remember uh, about uh, uh, the, the moment. People have been attacking your business, like the IRS commissioner, in various ways. Uh, and uh, I remember once uh, w when I was at, at UMB, uh, we had a trust conference, and uh, we invited you to come, and a number, and lots of other people came. And Jack Kemp, uh, the late great Jack Kemp, was our was our featured speaker, and I introduced him to you, and you had a nice conversation with Jack Kemp, and then and, and then I introduced Jack Kemp, and he got up and, and to speak, and of course he was interested in in uh, lowering taxes and simplifying taxes and flat taxes. And so the first words out of his mouth were, I'm here to put Henry Block out of business. Yeah. Jack was Kemp the was the NFL. My life. He was the NFL quarterback. Yeah, an NFL, yeah, an NFL quarterback. Maybe, maybe one too yeah. many hits, you think? Yeah. 
So, yeah. so, but the, the, the company has, has been hugely successful. You and your family have been, been hugely successful. But you've been entrepreneurial in other ways. And I, and I wonder if there's a similarity between what you've done well, with the company and what you've done for the community. We have a debt to Kansas City. I mean, without Kansas City, we would have nothing. Um, so we have a debt. And... Um, try to repay it. Well, you, you certainly had. You, you, you have. You, you've been head of the United Way, president of the Civic Council, uh, very involved with the American Jewish Com uh, Committee, uh, your scholarship program for C students, which is a great thing, the block school everybody knows about. But there's a very special thing in our community that you've been in involved in, and, 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 and it seems to me it's taken some of the entrepreneurial spirit, that, uh, that Kansas City spirit that you have, uh, to hang in there through the, the commentary and the, the, the issues and the controversy, and that's the block building at the, at the Nelson, which turns out today, uh, Paul Goldberger in The New Yorker said it was the best museum building built in the last 30 years. It had a lot of critics at the beginning. It, too. it did. It is. It's a remarkable building, and it, it uh, is. Mark Wilson, the director, deserves Mar Mark all deserves the credit. credit and, and, and you, know. you and 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 the, the other trustees. But it, it, it's it, it's a a great thing that uh, that you you've done there. Um, and I I wonder as you look back uh, over your career and 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 you think about the the high points and the and the low points. What 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 strikes you as a, as a great moment in the, in the history of your career? That's hard to say, but I, I know the people that work for the company just love the work they do. And uh, I know when the company was much smaller and I knew more people in it, they didn't want to go home at night. They just wanted to work. They were very conscientious. They were doing something and, that was, and that was they good enjoyed and successful. It. And, um, yeah, and you know, you 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 said we were uh, helping people, and and I you know I do hear criticism, but really we're doing the government a big favor. Without without the company, a lot of tax returns would be filed and that shouldn't be filed. Well, and you you you, you that, that early ad that John John White had of people tearing their hair out that is absolutely true. You know, there are those of us yeah. who try to do our taxes on our own, and yeah, I, and we have I can't less, do mine anymore. We have less hair than the. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. And it, at one point, you, you said that your your mother's vision for you, and if you hadn't hadn't uh, got gotten into the the United Business Company and the H and R Block business, you might have become a math teacher. And and uh, and and it's it's interesting to me that uh, my friend uh, Tom, your son, uh, that that he did become a math teacher. That's and, true. And you know, your legacy. You've got a legacy in a lot of ways. All of your children have been involved in the community. And, and, and been leaders in the community, and that, that must give you a great deal of uh, satisfaction as well. Definitely. Well, Henry, I, before we go upstairs, I want to say one, one, one last thing. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're honored by your presence here. You are a legend in the life of, of Kansas City. Uh, about uh, 31 years ago, I think, uh, the, the chamber named you Mr. Kansas City. And uh, I just want to say you're still Mr. Kansas City. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would join us upstairs, uh, we'll cut the ribbon in a, in a couple of minutes.